Live or in that, Namde Kano is a hero. Archbishop, hello, great viewers and subscribers. Welcome to my channel where we tell you the truth the way it is. The Methodist Archbishop of Okibwe, Archdiocese, and Bishop of Okibwe, Most Reverend, Levin Sonoa, has warned that they continue the tension of the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, I promise Namde Kano. It's a time bomb in the hand of Nigeria and the people holding him. Archbishop Onoha, who was reacting to the alleged media publication that the Johannes Ndibo is pleading with the Northern Edas and Asare Dokobo for the release of Mazen Namde Khan, God forbid, what useless or rotten Asare Dokobo and the so called rotten Northern Edas, God forbid, that somebody is doing this. Let's read on. Describe such plea coming from any Igbo group as arrant nonsense, saying that Ohane Zendi as led by Chief Emmanuel Iwanya or any responsible Igbo group cannot back Northern Edas or Niger Delta as a militant who is still publicly brandishing AK 47 for the list of mass number. Can God forbid. Is it the Frog in the creek. What is the honest they doing? Are they really the one doing this? Go for bead. Arrow. Let's read on. Archbishop Ono has said that Mazen Namde Kano did not commit any offense. And the, the court of competent judicial. In Nigeria has cleared him of all the charges leveled against him and therefore there is no reaction to plea to anybody for his release. Describing Mazen Namde Khan as a hero and voice of Ndibo, Archbishop Ono has said that the only crime Mazen Namde Khan has committed He's just been an Igbo man and standing up like no one in recent time to demand for what rightly belonged to Ndibo. The Methodist Archbishop wondered why over 50 years after the Nigerian Biafra Civil War ended, the Nigerian state and Nigerians are still bearing grudges and treating Ndibo as if they are not part of this country. According to Archbishop Ono, I read today in a newspaper that the Johannes Ndibo is pleading with Northern Edas and Asare Dokobo for the release of Mazen Namde Kano. And I wonder if such a report is correct. God forbid, it can never be correct. Correct. If it is correct, we are going to chase Johannes out from our land. That can never happen. He stinks. The world alone stinks. Let's read on. It really beats my imagination if Ohanes Ndibo has done something like that. Or do we now have to kind of Ohanes Ndibo in Nigeria? Number one is such plea should not be made. And it should not be in such inappropriate quarters. What is the crime or offense that Namde Kano committed? And why is Namde Kano still in captivity? Number two, on what basis is anybody or group pleading for Namde Kano's release? Are you pleading because he committed this noble felony which the court says he did not commit? Or are you pleading because he has spoken any other law of the country. What exactly is anybody or group pleading for? If that story is true, Namde Kano has done nothing wrong to be detained for this long. The only crime of Kano is that he is an evil man and has stood up like no one in recent time to save Ndibu, like Moses of the old in the hand of Pharaohs. Let me say it again, that any woman who is trying to plead 
For the release of Nam De Khan without giving us reason why he's doing that is only begging the issue. For me, Nam De Khan is a hero in life or in death. He is asking like no one is doing. Now, what rightly belongs to Ndibo? Yes, you stop the Nigerian Biafra Civil War in 1970s. 1970 to 1980 is 10 years. 1980 to 1990 is 20 years. 1990 to 2000 is 30 years. 2000 to 2010 is 40 years. And 2010 to 2020 is 50 guiding years for Christ's sake. This is 53 years after the Civil War ended and the so-called Nigerian state is still bearing gross grudges against Ndibu. Why? What did Ndibu people do wrong? Like I asked in my previous write-up that before the Nigerian Biafra Civil War, who were at the hem of affairs of the economic life of this nation? Was it not Ibo man? Who were at the hem of affairs in the educational sector and institutions in the nation? Was it not Ndibo? Who were at the people at the hem of affairs in the transportation industries in Nigeria? Where they not? Where then Ibo men? Were they not Ibo men? And what happened in those days? Yes, I remember that in those days, Igbo men went up to the north and established secondary schools like Igbo grammar schools in Kano, Igbo union schools, all over places that trained both Igbos and non Igbos and people from other nationalities living in Nigeria. Is that the crime or sin of Igbo man in Nigeria? Igbo men we are giving bushes to develop because people didn't want them in cities and they gave them bushes they call sabongeri in the northern language and Igbo men opened and developed them to cities is that the crime or sin of Igbo man? in Nigeria you go to Yoruba land all the swampy areas in Yoruba land particularly in Lagos state they pushed Ndibo into the swamps and they recovered and reclaimed those swamps from the rivers and developed them to cities. Is that the sin and crime of Ndibo? I really want to know why those who are said to be pleading for the release of Mazin Namde Khan, why they are doing that? If Mazin Namde Khan says that Nigeria is a zoo, is he far from the truth with what is happening in Nigeria today? A place where somebody will commit crime and offenses and you will leave the person and be chasing an innocent person to punish. Leaving the substance, objects, and chasing shadows. Nigeria leave offenders and pursue law abiding people. Law breakers are everywhere, walking freely, while innocent people are humiliated and pushed on daily basis. In Nigeria today, after Dr. Bo said to be a former Nigeria, their time militant brandish AK-47 is open to all Nigerians and threaten whoever he lies as militant. The military and police saw him and nobody talked up till this moment. But now they can never lift the gun and you have called him terrorist and all sort of names when he said that this place is a zoo. Is he far from the truth? Is that not a zoo? Where the lion will eat every animal and brandish all sort of power and kill anything it wants to kill. If anyone or group is pleading with northern elders and Sadhobo to release Mazin Namde Khan, you are simply making a mistake. Such is a misplaced plea. They are not owner of Nigeria and I have no such power to determine who is free and who is not. I am not sure that Hane Zendibu, as led by a respectable chief, Sir Emmanuel Iwanyan, will ever descend to such level to plead for the release of Khan when the court of competent judicians have set him free from every charges they maliciously level against him.
pleading to whom Namde Kano will rather choose to stay in detention instead of accepting his freedom on condition of such plea. He is never a coward. He is a time bomb waiting to explode in the hand of Nigerian and those holding him. The earlier you release him, the better for you and the country. So anybody who is pleading for his release is making a hell of mistake. And no tribo man will plead for his release. It is those sellouts that will do such rubbish. For me, Namde Kanu is the voice of Igbo people. If you imprison him, you have imprisoned every Igbo man. What type of life are we still living in this nation? We are the most militarized section of this country. The not where you have Boko around and bandit is free and you can't travel long distance from job just to Madugri, just to Kasuna, just to Sokoto. In the night, you will not see any military or police checkpoint about here in the east. Every two posts, you see military and police checkpoint. Not that they are providing security, but a starting motorist and traders. Now that I've come to the end of the news, do you still need an analysis? I am going to give you one. I thank the Honorable Reverend. I thank him so much for this article. I thank him for the great words because he is really a man of God. Not like those who have somewhere in Lagos State who are telling you that he should always pray to God. Even things when things are going wrong. That God will make it better. God help those that help themselves. Nam the Kano did not commit any crime. We have said it, and the court of law has validated it. So any government, like I said, who has been keeping him in communicado in the SS dungeon is a criminally minded government. In fact, I wonder sometimes when they say G5 this, G5 that, when they say United Nations this, United Nations that, I laugh because for them to welcome a criminally minded government from Nigeria shows that they are not anything far from what they are. A leader who calls himself a leader, I see him as a killer. Tidipu is a killer including the, his uh, predecessor who just left office, who has refused to obey court order. A judgment issued by a competent court of Nigeria who was obeying the constitution of Nigeria, the same constitution that you claim that the people made, that same constitution Tribu has refused to obey, just like a predecessor. Such a government is nothing but a terror government and criminally minded. I have said it in no time in several of my messages in this channel. So we can never obey. I will say something today. <laughs> he is saying it as a man of God who God has ordained. A real man of God for that sake. But the truth is that time will come when both Nibu, both those who call themselves elite, who, both those who are supporting the construction of Nam Kano, time will come when Nigeria will not contend them. That time is coming slowly. They are going to see different things in Nigeria. I am not ready to mention in this channel. And when that happened, nobody. So many will run to America. Someone will run to Britain. In fact, British will not contend them because things will be happening there also. People will be captured, but things are going to happen. I think I have to rest my case here. I have come to the end of this news. Jay Biafra.